Welcome back guys. So in this video, uh, we started out at like 8 in the morning, just fresh in the office, uh, trying to figure out what's going on. We don't show every single thing that's going wrong, but just keep this in mind. Um, before we took anything apart, we tried applying power to this inverter. It wouldn't turn on. Um, and we realized when we were applying power, the battery voltage shot right up. So that indicated to me we had a blown fuse. So it doesn't really show in the first half of this video exactly what's going on and how this inverter is not turning on. But uh, take my word for it, it wouldn't turn on and it was really acting strange. So on with the video. Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. We've got a little bit of an issue here. So we've had a UPS set up on our desk for a while now. This is our messy desk. And... Uh, we have this big battery 12 volt owl we've been using and testing. And uh, this has been in the bottom of this rack cabinet for quite a while now. And we've added some accessories like a little uh, 12 volt car amplifier to run our speakers and stuff. But either way, that, uh, that big battery was plugged in. Right down here is the Anderson connector. So right down here was the Anderson connector. And uh, that's just routed around here to this inverter. We came out here this morning and there was no power. So I thought something weird was going on, like maybe the battery over discharged. So I grabbed my uh, regulated power supply and uh, got that hooked up here on the inverter terminals. These had the covers on previously. And uh, the voltage went up, but the inverter wouldn't kick on. And this is an inverter charger for those of you that don't know. I made a video on this setup quite some time ago. Either way, we're, uh, we're in the troubleshooting stages still. I'm going to pull out this inverter because I think this inverter has gone bad on us. Let's go check out the big battery uh, owl block. I went ahead and pulled off this cover where they have a 300 amp fuse. It's just a little fuse mega. And uh, this is blown. So uh, quite interesting there. It must have been over 300 amps. So let's pull that inverter out and check it out. At least they make it easy to open up with some simple screws. But before I do this, let's talk about what I think is going to be in here. I think there's going to be blown FETs and probably a stuck transfer switch. Because that's how I've had these go before. Let's see. Everything appears to be okay. I don't see anything too crazy. I mean, I checked the breakers. They're uh, they're perfectly fine. So I'm going to hook up my uh, regulated power supply here. Um, I know you're supposed to hook up a battery, but regulated power supply can output power just as if it were a battery. And uh, this one's a uh, 0 to 20 volt, 0 to 5 amp supply. So let me get some, uh, get a wrench to tighten those. Okay, and let's give this bad boy some power. So I'm going to turn this on. And I'm going to go uh, voltage set. Let's go uh, 13 volts. And current set, let's go 5 volt amps. Let's see. I saw 5 amps for a brief second, but we're already up to voltage. So it sounds like it charged the capacitors there in the uh, inverter. So let's do, some, uh, let's do some metering. It's before coffee. I have an excuse. So I'm going to go across the battery terminals. Looks like we've got power. Um, for sanity, let's just try turning the switch on again. I've got nothing. 
literally nothing. That's super weird. I'm gonna watch and see if the current changes when I flip the switch on. It does, it goes up to a tenth of an amp. Something is going on. So it's not typically like me to go for a warranty replacement, but this guy's covered under warranty. At least I believe it still is. So I'm going to stop digging into it about here. It's nothing obvious. It's not obviously blown up. It just stopped working and for some reason blew that 300 amp fuse. So uh, usually when you run currents like that, like 300 amps, you're bound to find something that's blown up. But uh, nothing I can see here. So we're going to contact Ames Power. They're the OEM of this product and see what they say. So here we are on the next day, we're long past coffee. So I'm questioning whether the issues I was seeing were coffee related or product related. Um, you guys saw the kind of what was going on, but here's a little update. Uh, so it's the next day, I let this sit turned off overnight and I turned on my power supply uh, feeding like 14 volts into this and I actually turned on, it was really interesting. So then, shortly after, um, I went and got this Anderson cable hooked up and this big battery 12-volt uh, owl. And it's really weird. Now it's actually powering on. And it was being kind of intermittent. It wouldn't power on, but you can see now it's up and running. The lights are on and stuff. But uh, check this out. I have my uh, control panel from one of my Fox Power inverters. And this is just a uh, Cat5 cable down here, right? So out of curiosity, I plugged this into the LCD remote panel port and went ahead and flipped on the switch and check it out. This is booting up with the Ames inverter. You can see all the lights and stuff are on and this is showing 123 volts output, 60 hertz, uh, battery DC voltage. It's showing 13.3 volts and check it out over here on the 12 volt owl. We've got 13.2 according to that meter. So it's interesting that this control panel, it's turning on and off the inverter just fine. And this isn't even designed for this inverter. And my theory is all these inverters that are transformer and FET based like this one are all kind of the same inside. But uh, it's definitely an interesting issue that this had something go wrong. It blew a 300 amp fuse in this uh, big battery owl. And we changed that already. But uh, now it seems to be working just fine. I mean, here, let's uh, let's turn it on. I've got a heat gun here. This is just an Ace Hardware heat gun, and we'll put it on max. And you can see it's running it just fine. It's showing overload, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what would cause this to blow a 300 amp fuse, but then not work, and then the next day it's working. So, really weird. I mean, I'm a little bit puzzled. I'm a little bit not... Like, I don't want to use this on my uh, computer as a UPS. But now the thing's working like it should be. So, I mean, we can even try... Uh, I'll plug in here. This is the AC charger cord. When I plug this in, it should transfer over just fine. Now, I do hear a high pitch noise. And uh, Jarrett pointed this out to me the other day. There's actually... Um, a device here inside the inverter. Come check it out. Um, this yellow device right here is where it's where this high pitch noise is coming from. And if I, that's actually, um, how should I do this? I'm going to turn the battery off and now it's no longer charging. It's like just holding a voltage. So, uh, once the fan shuts off, I'll show you like the noise that we're hearing. So it's got a really high pitch uh, note to it. It's gotta be 20 plus kilohertz. But if I touch this, like I squeeze it like this, the noise is gone. I'm sure it's really hard to hear, but I don't know what would cause that. Some harmonic on the AC sine wave. Just some weird stuff going on with this unit. I, I don't, I'm, I'm a little at a loss. I'm not sure exactly what would have caused the issues we're seeing and uh, yeah, it's just weird. That's uh, that's our adventure on this Ames Power 1250 watt unit. So uh, we'll keep you guys updated as things progress. If we figure out 
you know, what's causing this or if we have issues again. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys in the next video.